Hi, my name is EJ Massa. Before we start, I just wanted to say that, you know, sometimes I criticize this show for things that I feel don't work. But it doesn't mean I don't like the show. No. I criticize because I care. So let me start off at a place of understanding. Now the showrunners, Dan and Dave, and you know, this is just a guess, but they saw that the actors' contracts were ending and their pays were getting higher, the cost of the show was getting higher, and they did some calculations and thought, hey, we need to end this show soon. Plus, they wanted to move on to other projects like that Confederate show. So in order to end the show properly, they have to pretzel three seasons of content into two short seasons. And that leads to the efficiencies and the blunt dialogue and so forth, and I understand that. And they're producing a super quality show given these constraints. Now with that being said, I'm still gonna rip this episode apart. I don't give a shit! <laughs> Braun was the one who saved Jamie, <laughs> and they somehow swam a mile down the river. How convenient and totally not a cheap cop-out to the cliffhanger last episode. Anyways, Braun sees the situation for what it is. You're fucked. Tyrion looks at the aftermath of the attack with great sadness. These were my people, and I led them to slaughter. We should honor their memory and- Hey, 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 stop looting their corpses. Shoo, shoo, Dothraki, shoo. Danny's giving a speech about how she'll forgive all those who bend the knee. Bend those knees, baby. It's my fetish. She gives them some Bernie Sanders type promises. I'll make sure that the 1% of the 1% will pay and give the government back to the people. I'll still rule over you with an iron fist with dragons. Now let us break the wheel. All right, now bend the knee. Bend the knee, bitches. Randall Tarley refuses to bend the knee. I already have a queen and she was born here and has lived here. Those are uh, pretty low standards there, Randall. And Randall Tarley is too racist, so he'll have to be burned. Dickon also volunteers to be burned because then there'd be no emotional impact if he didn't. That's why they made us like him in the previous episode. Jamie tells Cersei about how dragons are mean. Cersei's like, we've got gold now. We can buy people's love. Dragonfire can't melt gold beams. 9-11 truth or jokes, guys. We've got loads of them. Cersei is sad that she couldn't torture an old lady after murdering every member of her family. Uh, Jamie, how do you still like this lady? What's up, babe? I'm home. John, that's not the proper etiquette when greeting a strange dog, don't you know? You're supposed to hold a closed fist out and let them come to you. Hold it flat like that and you might lose a, a finger, you know, an arm, your whole body. That's a nice dog, says John. They aren't dogs, silly. They're my children. Calling your pets children? That's a red flag, John. Do not pursue. So, you Jesus? Don't want to talk about it. Jorah returns and Danny takes his word for it that he's cured of the grayscale and gives him a hug. You know, I'm not a germaphobe, but I just give him a friendly wave. Bran wargs into birdies and he sees the Night King's army. But the Night King notices. You know, probably because he gave him the bad touch last season. I always figured that since Bran was marked by the Night King, you know, after he passed through the wall, the magical barrier would be broken, and the White Walkers would just be able to pass through. Just like they were able to get into the Three-Eyed Raven root cave from last season. But Bran kind of unceremoniously went through the wall. So maybe the Night King will have a more dramatic way of breaking through the wall. So Bran sends a raven to Old Town with a detailed Wikipedia summary of what happened so far. Sam is like, if the maesters say ice people are real, then everybody will take the threat seriously. We will write to Maester Vulcan at Winterfell for clarification. Ah, fucking academics and your brilliant stall tactics. I swear to god, this guy, he makes too much sense, even though I know he's clearly wrong. Then they make fun of some fake prophets? I'm starting to doubt myself. Did I see a White Walker? Sam, are you sure you saw a White Walker? Did you see the flying spaghetti monster too? They're just too convincing. Tyrion and Varys are feeling bad about all the kings and queens sentencing people to death. Look, motherfuckers, Tyrion, you shot your daddy in the stomach and strangled your whore friend. And Varys, you stole Uncle Fester's style from Adam's family. So I don't think you guys have any room to complain. Anyways, a message came in from the north and apparently John didn't know Bran was alive? I thought Sam told them. Did I misremember this? When he told me about Bran going beyond the wall, all I could think about was getting my strength back so I could go and find him. I wish I could have convinced him to come back with me. I thought Bran was dead. No you didn't, you stupid shit. Maybe the writers got confused with the books where John doesn't know that Bran is alive? Or maybe John just assumed that since he hasn't seen Bran in a while that he was dead? But what about this line from Danny? You lost two brothers as well. The writers are being sloppy. Speaking of sloppy, they come up with this weird idea that they need to convince Cersei that zombies are real, so Jorah and Jon are going north to get one. Instead of, you know, just flying over to King's Landing and finishing the job, stop leaving Cersei alive. The Night King has been in a holding pattern for seven years. Just kill Cersei. Please, I don't want to have to go through this again. I don't. Although in the books, there's a plot line where Alistair Thorne takes a piece of a white down to King's Landing, so maybe it's kind of trying to honor that plot. 
Maybe. In the North, everyone is having buyer's remorse about John. Are they always in board meetings in Winterfell? Just hanging around in a board meeting getting pissed? I'd be pissed if I was always in board meetings. Sansa finally mentions Ghost. I wasn't expected to just sit and wait for him like Ghost. But seriously, where the fuck is Ghost? Actually, it's better that he doesn't appear. Arya and Sansa have different styles of diplomacy. Sansa thinks you should talk and hear people out, work out issues, you know, through conversation. Arya thinks you should just murder them. Then you don't have to talk or listen. They just bleed out and die. Much easier. Tyrion and Davos pull up the King's Landing and finally address that Tyrion basically killed Davos' son. Oh, now you care about your son, Davos. Also, where's your boring wife that you supposedly love so much? Bet you didn't think about her when you were flirting with Missande, did you, Davos? Personally, I forgive Davos because he has some good one-liners this episode. What if someone takes the boot. Then we're fucked. Bronn takes Jamie to the basement where he meets Tyrion. Tyrion starts crying and wants to work out his daddy issues. No, shut up. What do you want? You see, we have this really stupid plan. Cool, I'm down. Davos meets up with Gendry. Finally. Thought you might still be rowing. Oh no, the writers found our memes. Nothing fucks you harder than time. One-liner MVP this episode. Sorry, Bron. You can't expect a win with just a couple C words. Anyways, Gendry's ready to make up for lost time and join the plot. Who needs character motivations? Davos gets accosted by some gold cloaks, and he tries to bribe them with free samples of Viagra. But we wouldn't want to waste those close-ups of that hammer. <laughs> no, of course not. We gotta see in action. That's Chekhov's hammer, don't you know? <laughs> oh, that's right, boys. Jamie interrupts Cersei's OBGYN appointment. <laughs> Congrats, big guy. What? Jamie says he met with Tyrion and they want a truce so they can battle zombies. Oh hell yeah, cause we're fucked. Also, I'm having a baby. It's yours, and I'm telling everyone. Maybe you shouldn't? Remember what father always told us? Please don't fuck your sister? No, 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 not that. Don't tell anyone you fuck your sister? No, the other thing. Please don't reveal the parentage of your- I'm telling everyone. Davos wants Gendry to roleplay. Here's your cover. You are Norman, a well-to-do English gentleman on holiday with a slight limp and a glass eye. You'll say that your mother is sick and that you require a certain jewel to pay back the blackmailers who- Hi, I'm Gendry. Damn it. But Gendry is just so down to clown to go north and fight for absolutely no reason except that the writers thought it'd be fun. Tyrion and Mormont miss each other, and Tyrion gives Jorah a coin so that he can look on it and think of him often. Jorah is suddenly over Danny and realizes it's Tyrion who was there for him all along. Oh, and I guess John and Danny share a moment, but who cares? Tyrion and Jorah. Forever. Gilly is reading off some trivia pursuit cards, and Sam doesn't give a shit. She casually drops the biggest bomb of the series that Rhaegar's probably legitimately married to Lyanna, and thus Jon Snow is not a bastard. But Sam doesn't care that his simpleton girlfriend overcame her inbreeding to learn to read, and steals random books and scrolls which probably contain exactly what they need to defeat Night King because that's probably what they contain, because who cares? It'd be awesome if he gets on the road and he realizes he has a bunch of useless books like the Westeros versions of the Berenstain Bears. Which is like regular Berenstain Bears books, except they kill and fuck each other. Arya catches Littlefinger sneaking around, and she finds a scroll hidden in his bed. It's the message Cersei forced Sansa to write to Rob. But oh shit, Littlefinger wanted it to happen. There's the Littlefinger I know and love. He's back, baby. The dudes arrive at Eastwatch. Hey, that's the name of the episode. And after briefing Tormund on the stupid plan, they go to the dungeon where the Brotherhood and the Hound are being held, and they find out they all have beef with each other and hate each other. Wow, this will be one of those wacky madcap adventures. <laughs> They'll have to set their differences aside for this suicide mission. So that's it, huh? We're some kind of suicide squad? Hopefully that doesn't mean the Night King's gonna hula hoop dance and shoot a laser into the sky. I don't have a ton to say about this episode. I definitely heard the loud turnings of the plot machinations. You could consider it the connective tissue between events. You know, the, the tough meat that you have to cook low and slow for many and many hours until you get nice tender meat. Mmm, tender meat. Where was I going with this metaphor? So there were some great character scenes like Jamie and Tyrion's reunion, and tying up some loose ends like Gendry. Davos was taking care of business, and I love seeing him as the smuggler of Flea Bottom again. The War of the Two Queens might be headed for a shaky truce now, uh, for better or worse. But some things seem to click too conveniently into place, like Gendry's eagerness to join the plot, and Danny totally up for fighting ice zombies with Jon. Probably because she's hot in the pants for him. You can really feel the writer's hands rapidly pushing all the pieces into place. I also tried really, really hard not to pay attention to any time discrepancies or travel discrepancies, and it worked. I enjoyed myself more. I removed that part of my brain with an ice pick. So this was clearly a bridge to the last two episodes, but there was enough here to make the journey worthwhile. Let's just say this. I don't think this episode's going to be in anybody's top ten lists. I mean, they can't all be, right? Well, n no, because... 
because there's more than 10 episodes in the series. You know, there's, there's like 75 episodes, so they can't all be in the top 10. That's logic. 75 is more than 10. I may be partially lobotomized, but I can still use logic. Hot, hot, hot dog, hot, hot dog, hot, hot, hot dog, hot, hot dog. <laughs>